Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. My name is Sarah, and I am your host. Happy to be with you on this episode. We are talking about some children's books today, along with some upcoming or existing book news. Uh, Decided on this topic, these topics, for today's episode because... The other day, I was chatting with a friend, I think via Snapchat. It, it may have been text. It doesn't matter. And uh, I was being silly. She said it, she was going to bed and said good night. And so I said, good night, sleep tight, don't let the zipper rump zoos bite, <laughs> which um, made her laugh. I don't know that she got the reference. Or maybe she did, and she was laughing because she did get the reference. If you don't know the reference, the, I don't blame you. It's not exactly a common phrase you know bed bugs is usually the phrase but I've been saying good night sleep tight don't let the zipper rump a zoo's bite since I was a kid because it is uh, one of the last lines if not the last line in Little Monsters Bedtime Stories by Mercer Mayer. Mercer Mayer you may know uh, from books such as Just Me and My Mom, Just Me and My Dad, a a lot of little critter books not a lot, of, yes, a lot of little critter books, but little critter books, a lot of which start with just, just me and my baby sister, just me and my grandparents, just you know, all of these things. And I read a lot of little critter books as a kid. Loved little critter, still love little critter, but I also loved um, little monster as well. And little monster's bedtime story is. A dad, a daddy monster, reading to his little monster before bed, which is lovely. And little monster's pet monster, pet something, I'm not entirely sure what it is, is in the store, is in the story, in bed, in bed with little critter, listening to the stories. It's, a, it's just a series of 15 poems about different monsters, and they're very cute, and they're very sweet. And then at the end of the book, when he kisses little monster goodnight, he says, Good night, sleep tight, don't let the zipper up a zoo's bite. <laughs> and it has always stuck with me. And I I love Little Monster. There is a book, a different Little Monster book, and off the top of my head, I can't remember which one it is. And I looked to see if I could find the title of it. At any rate, it's another Little Monster book, and um, one of the characters has to go to the doctor because he's not feeling well and he sighs all day. You can tell he's not feeling well because he just he sighs all day. And in the picture, he, there he is, not feeling well. And he in the little thought bubble or the little little dialogue bubble, it says, "All day." <laughs> My- my family, we're a bunch of book nerd dorks. My my mother and I still say, all day, every time, not every time, but many times when we are sighing, we're just, we sigh all day because we're goofy that way, but I like that we're goofy. So I grew up with these books. I love them. I still find them uh whenever I can for uh, kids' friends. Had a friend have a book baby shower. Oh, man. Oh, I think Aaron's in sixth or seventh grade now. Wow. So he got a copy of Little Monster, Little Monster's Bedtime Stories. And um, so I just thought I would talk about Mercer Mayer in case you didn't know. Oh, and since Sunday is Father's Day, Just Me and My Dad, it makes me, makes me think of the Just Me and My Dad book, Little Critter, who's not Little Monster, he's Little Critter. But Little Critter goes camping with his dad, and there is... An animated, uh, a half hour animated movie. I don't know who made it. My mom, again with my mom, my mom had the VHS 
Yep. The VHS of just me and my dad, and I watched it. She did daycare, so I was probably a teenager when I started watching it, but I watched it with the kids. <laughs> you re- mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched it with the kids. No, I totally watched it just for me also, but it's adorable, the little kid who voices... Um, little critter, that little kid's probably 40 now or whatever, but uh, he, <laughs> he had this adorable little voice. And so little critter and his dad go camping and it's very sweet. Um, there's one book where little critter is trying so hard. I wanted to do so many things just for you, but you know, like I wanted to not splash in my bath just for you, but there was a storm (laughs) and there's water everywhere. And little critter's mom is like, Oh man, why does my kid do this? It just makes me roll my eyes. But, um, in case you don't know Mercer Mayer, or or maybe you know Little Critter and Little Monster, but you don't really know much about Mercer Mayer, because I realized that I don't think I know very much about Mercer Mayer. So I went to, um, littlecritter.com, which is the Mercer Mayer website. And his bio says, I began illustrating books in 1966. Since that time, I have published over 300 books. Most of my books are about things that happened to me when I was a little kid. Now I'm a big kid, and I write about things that happen now, especially with my own children and grandchildren. They always remind me of what it is like to be little. Several of my books have been translated into other languages, like Spanish, German, French, and Japanese, which, as a side note, would be fascinating. I wonder how those... You know, I'm always fascinated by by, um, language and translations and how some of the things translate... Um, does Zipper Rumpazoos just translate into Zipper Rumpazoos? What about Good Night Sleep Tight? I don't know, all those fun things. But uh, the bio continues I was born in Arkansas in 1943. Boy, that was a long time ago. It's real fun to be an old kid. When I was 13 years old, my parents and my sister and I moved to Hawaii. After high school, I went to Honolulu Academy of Arts. Then I went to New York City and the Arts Students League. Uh, A few years later, I began writing children's books. Then I moved to New England. My wife, Gina, and I write the Little Critter stories together. In 2007, I was chosen to be the National Book Festival Artist of the Year and went to Washington, D.C. It was nothing short of amazing. At the Pavilion of States, I signed books, showed people how I draw, and played my ukulele. There were author pavilions showcasing more than 70 American authors, illustrators, and poets. And then there's a picture of him. Uh, next to the special poster that he created for it and it's uh it's very fun very 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 him (laughs) it's it's definitely his style so if you aren't familiar with mercer mayer and you are looking for some fun children's books then i would definitely check out little critter and um little monster little critter definitely has more books than little monster but I loved them equally growing up for different reasons. They're just, I don't know, they're just so sweet. And I i love the illustrations. I love the simple messages behind them, you know, like Little Critter with just me and my mom. He's trying, or um, just for you, excuse me, that's the one. He's, he's trying so hard. You know, I wanted to do this just for you. And, and, you know, I wanted to make breakfast just for you, but the eggs were slippery and there's eggs on the floor and poor mom has to clean them up, of course. Um, but finally, in the end, he says, I want to do something special just for you. And I did it. And um, he, mom gets a hug and it's very sweet. So, um, some, some of the, oh, and, and there are a bunch of, um, fairy tales, little critter, little critter, Hansel and Gretel, little critter, Jack and the Beanstalk, little critter, little red riding hood. Um, I did not, n- I, I knew that because I've seen the cover. I've seen the drawings from little critter, little red riding hood, which is hard to say, but I hadn't really thought about it, but there's a Valentine's one. There's Easter, uh, mother's day, Valentine's day. And then, um, there's, there's the one I was so mad. That's a great one for talking about feelings and expressing feelings. Um, but, uh, so many that start with just, just a day at the pond, just a dump truck, just a little critter collection, just a little luck, just a little music. You get the idea. Um, the, there's, there's the just mom and me, just dad and me, just grandpa and me, just grandma and me, just me and my babysitter, just me and my dad, me and my little brother, just me and my puppy, <laughs> just my friend and me, you know, you get the idea, but I love these stories. There's a story you know, kind of for every little thing that happens in daily life with kids. And then 
as I said, I, I really love the little monster books as well. I just like his um, his whimsical storytelling. It's it's whimsical. It's adorable. Little Critter is adorable. The, the, the drawings are very sweet. But also they are sweet and um, simple stories about what goes on in the life of a kid and in the life of a family and how it's not always it's not always great sometimes you try your best and you um, you dump the eggs on the floor and mom has to clean up after you sometimes you just you know want to hang out with your dad and you don't want your you know or you just want to hang out and you don't want your baby sister in the, the, there sometimes you're just so mad and you have to learn to express those emotions and it's okay to have those emotions um, he also does some McGraw Hill first readers books there's a whole series of those on his website so if you aren't familiar with Mercer Mayer and you have kids in your life or you love children's books I would definitely suggest you check out littlecritter.com if you are familiar with Mercer Mayer then um, you you maybe understand my love of Little Critter and Little Monster. We are going to take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we will be talking about another children's author, Maurice Sendak. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Hi, this is Sarah, host of the GSMC Book Review Podcast, here to talk to you about a new trilogy from Tamara Veach and Renee DeFazio. For every soul, there is a theme a path that must be followed, lessons that must be learned. This is the basis of The Emissary, book one of the One Great Year series, a tale of love reborn throughout the ages, of epic battles between good and evil, and of how the consciousness of hum humanity ebbs and flows through the endless cycles of light and dark. Tamara and Renee are a husband and wife writing team who love researching historical and spiritual information, and I am excited to say that they will be joining me on the GSMC Book Review podcast on June 18th to talk about The Emissary in the One Great Year series. Released by Waterside Productions, Inc., The Emissary is available at Amazon.com or by ordering through your favorite bookstore. Make The Emissary part of your summer reading list today. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Before the break, I was talking about Mercer Mayer and the Little Critter and Little Monster series, the books that I loved growing up, still do, I'm a big kid at heart. And um, now I want to move on to Maurice Sendak. Why? Not because they have a whole lot in common, except that they write children's books and illustrate children's books, but because, for some reason, whenever I am trying to think of the author of the Little Monster books, I think of Maury Sundak. In fact, when I was getting ready to do this podcast, I looked up, I googled Maury Sundak because I was trying to find out more about him. And then as, you know, where the wild things are popped up, realized, wait a minute, that is not the name of the author that I am looking for. These are not the droids you are looking for. Mercer Mayer is not Maurice Sendak, no matter how confused my brain gets. Um, but it, it turns out that Maurice Sendak also has um, a monster series. I don't know if you knew that, but Seven Little Monsters, and there are six books in that series, which seems wrong. There should be seven books in the Seven Little Monsters series, but that's just me. So Maurice Sendak um, is a Caldecott Award-winning children's book author and illustrator, best known for his book, where the Wild Things Are, that's probably the one that people are most familiar with, followed maybe by In the Night Kitchen. Um, a lot of people have heard of that one as well. He was born June 10th, 1928, died May 8th, 2012. So he's been gone seven years now. Wow. He was born in New York City. Uh, he studied at the Art Students League and illustrated more than 80 books by other writers before authoring one himself. Wow, that is amazing. His most critically acclaimed work includes the dark and beloved story Where the Wild Things Are. Later in his career, Sendak collaborated with Carol King on the musical Really Rosie and has done other works for the stage. That is something that I did not know. Um, 
He was a sickly child, apparently, who started to draw to pass the time. He excelled at art, landing a part-time job at All American Comics while in high school, while working on windows displays for New York's famed toy store F.A.O. Schwartz in the late 1940s. He met legendary children's book editor Ursula Nordstrom, and she helped him land his first job illustrating children's books. This all comes from um, biography.com. During the 1950s, he worked on books by such authors as Ruth Krauss and Elsie Homelund Minerick. And um, so in 1956, he published Kenny's Window, the first children's book he both wrote and illustrated himself. And then he wrote Where the Wild Things Are in 1963, which wasn't at first... um, that well received but uh children loved it kind of loved that kind of that obviously that wild aspect of it and um it it became more popular then and it earned him a caldecott medal which is a, a, a caldecott medal actually for its illustrations I also came across an interesting article, Nine Surprising Facts About Maurice Sendak, which sounds a lot like um, clickbait, although I don't think there's probably a lot of people (laughs) who are being drawn in by clickbait about Maurice Sendak. I could be wrong. We book nerds are out there. Um, So he designed F.A.O. Schwartz's window displays, which we know from his biography. Where the Wild Things Are was originally titled Where the Wild Horses Are, which is interesting it was intended to feature fillies, foals, and mares, but editor Ursula Nordstrom adored the title, um, finding it poetic and beautiful, but there was one problem. <laughs> Sendak couldn't draw horses. When he told his editor that the whole horse thing wasn't going to work out, he recalls her quote-unquote acid-toned response, Maurice, what can you draw? <laughs> um, well, you can draw quite a lot, actually, as it turns out. <laughs> Things, he said. <laughs> And things he drew. Um, as a side note, Ursula Nordstrom was the editor of The Giving Tree, Good Night Moon, Harold and the Purple Crayon, and Charlotte's Web. Wow, that is impressive. The things Senda ended up creating were inspired by his immigrant relatives and the way he viewed them as a child. Wow. Um, they were unkempt, their teeth were horrifying, hair unraveling out of their noses. <laughs> Though the monsters were modeled after his family, they weren't named after them. In fact, the things had no names in the books. In the book, they finally received monikers when Wild Things was made into an opera. We had to have names to tell the actors when they were screwing up. They had Jewish names, Moishe, Shmuel, but the names were dropped after the opera. Uh, They never had names until they became movie stars. Um, So those are a few things that you might know um oh here's an interesting one his uh book in the night kitchen uh from 1970 is frequently banned though many parents and libraries initially protested what where the wild things are that where the wild things are was too scary for children it was his later book in the night kitchen that landed on the american library association's frequently challenged and banned book list it features a little boy named mickey who is nude throughout most of the story (laughs) Likely because he's dreaming. I forgot that. Uh, have you ever, have you never had a dream yourself where you were totally naked? Sendak said when Col- Stephen Colbert asked him about the nudity. Colbert, no. Sendak, I think you're a man of little imagination. <laughs> Maury Sendak sounded like a hilarious person. Because of Mickey's full frontal nudity, yes, mm-hmm, and some of his nude antics in the book, he jumps into a bottle of milk, for instance, and later slides down it. Uh, Critics have deemed it inappropriate for children. Wow. Um, That is interesting. Um, He also, number nine, never came out to his parents. So um, he he said, all I wanted was to be straight so my parents could be happy. Oh, he told the New York Times in 2008. They never, never, never knew. Um, Eugene Glynn, who was his partner of 50 years, died in 2007. Wow. Um, that is, that just makes my heart break a little bit for him to never be able to be honest with his parents, but it happens. Of course, these things do tend to happen. So anyway, Maurice Sendak did not write the little critter books. <laughs> he did write Where the Wild Things Are and the frequently banned In the Night Kitchen, which I clearly had 
forgotten that had contained nudity. It obviously didn't affect me as a kid. I was probably just like, hey, look, that boy's naked. My mom was like, yep. <laughs> so it's kind of how things tended to go in our books or in our house. Um, the series I was talking about before um, is his Little Monsters series, Seven Little Monsters. And that is, let me find out more about it. I thought I had that window up, but I do not. So let's see, Seven Little Monsters. It is a counting book. Um, it's actually an unknown follow-up to Sendex Caldecott winning Where the Wild Things Are. So that is according to Amazon. If you um, look at the see if you look at the pictures you can definitely see that they are the things from where the wild things are um, seven monsters make trouble for visit for villagers so it is a counting book and you can see if you like those those things from where the wild things are then you get to encounter them in slightly different illustrated form as I mentioned, it is a Seven Little Monsters is a counting book. Um, the seven giant monsters actually are each named as a number, which makes sense since the things were not named and where the wild things are. Uh, so one through seven line up together and then they start causing mischief. One flies, two uses his nose to dig a hole, three scares a town, four eats tulip trees, five drinks the seas, six sleeps on houses, and seven unscrews his head. That's disturbing. The final frame shows the giant monsters captured and restrained by the relatively tiny townspeople. Oh, poor monsters. Well, except that they were causing trouble. Anyway, there was also a PBS kids show of the same name that ran from 2000 to 2004, so maybe you are familiar with that. That is just a little bit about Maurice Sendak, who sounds like he was a pretty amazing uh, guy. And he did um, illustrate, I've talked about the Mrs. Piggle Wiggle books on this podcast before, and he illustrated Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's Farm, which again was one of my favorite books growing up. So uh, one of my favorite books, and he was an amazing illustrator. So I like that he illustrated one of my favorite books. Can't go wrong with that. We are going to take a break, and when we come back, we will be switching from children's book books to some book news from authors that we've had on the podcast. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. We've been talking about children's books, um, Maurice Sendak and Mercer Mayer. But now, as I said, we're going to move on to some book news. I have I follow a lot of authors, especially the authors that I interview. So I get a lot of newsletter emails, which is cool because then, then I find stuff out, you know, when new books are coming out. I follow a lot of authors on Goodreads and Amazon, etc., because I try to stay up on what my authors are doing. So, a few um, announcements of books that have come out or are coming out. An email from Brad Schaefer last week. He is the author of um, 
excuse me, of another time and place. That was the World War II historical fiction novel that we featured on the podcast a few months ago. He emailed me to let me know that there is an ebook, an ebook, an audiobook in the works. So I am excited about that because you know I love audiobooks. He is going to let me know when there is more information, such as when you can actually get the audiobook. Um, it's in the works, so I don't know who is narrating it or anything, but it is coming, so uh, look for that. I will give you more information when I know more information, such as a release date, etc. If you are a fan of uh, paranormal romance, or if you are a fan specifically of Jasmine Silvera's Grace Bloods series, book three is out. It is called The Talon and the Blade. This one moves away from Azrael and Isela and focuses on Gregor, who is a, an interesting character. Uh, over one over 200 years, Gregor Schwartz earned his brutal no notoriety as the necromancer Azrael's pitiless enforcer. Few, living or dead, dare to cross him. But when he's sent to Los Angeles to satisfy one of his boss's debts, Gregor encounters a powerful and intriguing woman who is utterly unimpressed by his fearsome reputation. Uh, trained by samurai, her skills honed to perfection through a quest for vengeance. Anna Gozen serves as judge, jury, and executioner for Raven Nightfeather, the necromancer of North America. Anna is exquisitely proficient and certainly needs no help from an outsider, especially a trigger-happy immortal with a reputa reputation for lunacy. But when a plot to overthrow Raymond comes to light, Anna is forced to work with Gregor to hunt down and destroy a grace-blooded monster responsible for a series of vicious attacks. If these two solitary warriors can summon the pain of their can surmount, excuse me, the pain of their separate pasts, they just might prevent total chaos and capture a future together. So Jasmine mentioned uh, when she was on the podcast that Gregor was one of those characters that really intrigued people and intrigued her as an author. So she decided to give him his own books, uh, his own book. She will continue telling Azrael and Isela's story, but now this uh, it's taking a slightly different turn as we focus on Gregor and get to learn a little bit more about him because he is very taciturn. He is very... Um, at times unlikable, but also somehow a little bit likable. Uh, I'll be interested to see. I always like when uh, I get to learn more about a character, especially one that kind of, eh, not sure. Do I like him? Do I not like him? Let's find out more. In other book news, Priscilla Oliveras, who has also been on uh, twice on the podcast, has a new story in an anthology. That anthology is called Once Upon a Wedding. A Fiction from the Heart Second Chances Anthology. Priscilla's contribution to the anthology is called Always Yours. With love in the air at a familial wedding, two high school sweethearts separated by misguided mistakes just might find their second chance for a happily ever after together. Uh, there are 11 stories in this one, 11 second chance romance novellas in one book. So if you are a fan of novellas if you are a fan of Priscilla's which I am then you maybe want to check this out and um, the other authors contributing are Jamie Beck, Tracy Brogan, Sonali Dev, K.M. Jackson, Donna Kaufman, Sally Kilpatrick, Falguni Kothari, Priscilla of course, Hope Ramsey, Barbara Samuel, and Liz Talley. Speaking of anthology... Laura Heffernan has, it's not an anthology, it's actually a series, but it is a series of books, the Oceanic Dreams series. It's an eight book series, and Laura has a book in this series. Hers is number two. It is out now. It's called Time of My Life, um, a romantic comedy, and as I said, it is number two in the Oceanic Dreams series. Janie's never felt this way before, but passengers are off limits. It's only one dirty dance. What could go wrong? Legend says everyone who boards the oceanic Aphrodite finds love. Janie's on the ship to teach pole fitness, not for romance. <laughs> then she meets Frank. He's everything Janie isn't. Refined, classy, rich. But his good looks and charm make him undeniably appealing. Unfortunately, he's also a passenger. When Janie's partner can't perform in the end of Crew's talent show, Frank offers to fill in. 
He's never done pole, but she's got time to teach him. As they grow closer, Janie finds herself hoping the legend is real. But if she gives in to temptation, she could be out of a job. Ah, so it sounds like uh, Dirty Dancing a little bit, only with the roles switched. I like it. I haven't read it yet, but um, it's, on, it's on my always growing list. Uh, Laura Heffernan, if you don't remember, has been on the podcast. I believe she's also been on twice, and she was on for her reality star series, a trilogy of books featuring a couple uh, who met on a reality show and then their experiences with uh, a second reality television series, well, two other reality series TV shows, and they're pretty funny, especially if you're a fan of reality shows. Uh, she also has a, a new book uh, and a new series coming out. You can pre-order it. It's not out yet. Comes out in August, August 13, and um, it's the Gamer Girl series, and the first one is called She's Got Game. Travel blogger Gwen Williams is about to live the dream, competing in the annual American Board Game Championship. She's up against some stiff competition, namely legendary gamer and four-time champ Cody McKay. The seriously buff, haughty, and shameless flirt is going all out to seduce her. That's when Gwen lays her cards on the table. She never, ever mixes gaming with romance, until resisting Cody becomes a losing proposition. As Gwen gives in to temptation, everything's in play for a major heartache. With the rounds heating up and players eliminated, she knows she's gambling a lot more than a seat at the final table in Vegas. But Cody's kisses promise more than a fleeting romance. If she plays her cards right, Gwen just might walk off with the championship and the man of her dreams. Again, that is the first in the Gamer Girls series, and it's called She's Got Game. You can pre-order it. It comes out August 13th. So there you have it, some news from some of the authors that have been on the podcast. If you have heard their interviews and um, are fans of their work, then you should definitely check those out. If you haven't heard those interviews, you should go check those out and then check the books out. <laughs> or, you know, either way, whatever order you want to do it in, I'm, I'm cool. At any rate, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the GSMC Podcast network nope gsmc book review podcast um i hope you will join me on tuesday when i will be interviewing uh my first co-author inter interview where both authors are present and that is husband and wife writing team tamara veach and rennie defazio who have written uh the first two of the one great year trilogy and the third one comes out next year so they are on the podcast to talk about the first of those books the emissary and i hope you will join me on tuesday for that interview in the meantime have a wonderful weekend and make sure you find some time to get yourself lost in a good book Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program